Hi, Martin. Great to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're Director of Product Marketing at Trucker CRM. Please tell us a bit about your role there, what you do at Trucker CRM. Great. Well, as a kind of a, a late-phase startup, uh, we everyone does a little bit of everything, right? I mean, there's really not a lot of downtime. Everything's really hectic, fast-paced, growing very quickly. Uh, so as product marketing, we do a lot of product messaging, but also a lot of corporate messaging. And, and the interesting thing about open source is there's so much transparency Uh, with the public, with the community, uh, with the, the project, with the products and services, that really corporate messaging becomes product messaging, right? You're really pushing a product out there and, and establishing a brand and a culture that's associated with that, uh, with that software. So really for us, we, we deal with the media, we deal with uh, the analyst uh, community out there, and then also do a little bit of community marketing, but then also really it's about getting more market visibility for the CRM tools that we sell subscriptions to. Because the community, the open source community, which now numbers around 100,000 individuals, has done a fantastic job for us of really starting to seed the market out there and getting critical mass around the, the open source angle. And what we try to do in the marketing department is gain on that momentum from the commercial side because Sugar CRM at its base is a commercial open source company. It's not purely open source in the sense that everything's free, right? We do our business. And uh, the commercial side, you know, we always want to grow that with the open source foundation at the heart of everything. What did you do before? Prior to that, I was heading the application software practice at the 451 Group headquartered in New York City. And it's a typical software analysis firm. So I had a portfolio of about 50, 60, 70 companies change, and I covered all types of areas, ERP, CRM, web analytics, business intelligence. And uh, Sugar was a small company that kind of came in, and I'd known uh, a lot of the, the founders from their previous endeavors. And they came in with this idea, and, and I said, wow, this is really interesting. And I followed them for a couple of years. Uh, they came in in 2004, uh, and then uh, about two and a half, three years later, uh, I joined the company. I thought, you know, of all the companies I'd seen, this is one that I saw that really was changing the market, had an amazing amount of upside in terms of the potential market, and really just had a culture that really, really jived with the way that, you know, I saw the software industry growing and really wanted to be a part of it and, and came on uh, in April of uh, – of 2007 and uh, it's been great ever since. So you have this analyst background, this means that you are an objective person as an analyst, now you do product marketing. Are you more subjective now? Uh, what does it mean <laughs> for your job? You know, I think when you're, you know, when you go from, like I said, covering dozens of companies down to one, it's amazing the amount of focus that you have, right? And, and you've got to continue to, to say, good things about one company, uh, you, you know, you obviously accentuate the positive and, and try to uh, try to accept and, and change the negative, right, for the better. And we, we take a lot of feedback being an open source at a, uh, project at the heart. We learn a lot from people out there because we have so many people on our forums and, you know, contributing to wikis and just out there, you know, writing blogs about sugar. So it is interesting to, to kind of take an objective approach to a single entity. I mean, too many people in the proprietary model, right? Their marketing plans were always, let's create a message and have it be one direction. Let's say our product is great and we're going to put it that way and just keep pushing it in one direction out to a potential user base, right? And sell on that marketing message. With us, it's really a dialogue. And what we try to do is say, here's, here's what we initially thought. It's an iterative process, right? We say, here's our, here's our project, started with the open source. Now we've made a product out of it. Let's see what people think get as many people to, to use it, to test it, to see where bugs might be or, or areas where it might be a little better from a process perspective. After all, CRM is all about automating business processes, right? And really figure out a way to, to learn from everything that we do out there and, and get as much feedback. So really, we're less marketing, uh, uh, less a marketing department as we are a kind of feedback management team. And we take in feedback from so many sources, whether it's people you know, relating to the things that we do from a, from a PR perspective and out there in, in advertising and, and events that we are either participating in or, or putting on ourselves, or just like I said, out there, we've got forums and there's thousands of people a day saying good things, bad things, neutral things that might be interesting uh, about the company and really trying to, to distill all that into, you know, a message to us that we can learn from 
improve our products and services, and then put it back out there and say, this is where we're going. So our roadmap is really dictated by that conversation that's going out there among the community. And our community is our user base. It's the developers. It's our partners. It's, you know, the customers. Uh, it's the, the CIOs that make big decisions. It's, uh, you know, our investors. So it really is a, an interesting, diverse community that, that gives us kind of our vision and, and helps us to continue to own it. We never wanted to say, you know, we're up in this ivory tower. It's a few people that make the product direction and never going to listen to anybody because that's been proven that it doesn't work. So really if what we do in the marketing department in, is try to be objective, is try to take as much in and, and really learn from it rather than saying, we're smarter than you, we know how CRM works, we're going to tell you how the product is going to be built. We really say, you know, it's more about people telling us, this is how we do our business. CRM is supposed to automate business and make it better. It, we're not supposed to have to, you know, conform to a product. So we really try to take as much of that in as possible and be objective in the process. So it really was a great transition for me to, to not have to go from objective analyst to subjective person just pushing out marketing materials, right? So it's been interesting. Sugar CRM has a pretty complete product portfolio with a software as a service offering, on-premise offering. Mm -hmm. You have a community edition, you have a professional edition, enterprise edition. So it's a pretty complete portfolio. What does it mean in terms of marketing? Is it complex to market that portfolio or is it easy to understand for customers? You know, I think when you do have a lot of product lines, you do have a challenge, right? Because if I'm, you know, if I come to Sugar, there's different touch points, right? Depending on if I'm a developer, I look at the Community Edition as a great platform for me to go and code on and build extensions and, and be part of that community and, and, and they understand that role. If I'm a small business owner, I might look at Sugar Professionals the first time I actually come to the to the product. I never downloaded the open source. I I just wanted a great solution at a great price, right? Uh, and, and don't want to take a lot of risks with my uh, with my CRM system. So that works for me. I might be a large company and and the enterprise edition on site works for me versus the on demand because I really want to make a lot of customizations. CRM for me is how I make my competitive differentiation, right? So, so there's all these different reasons. So what we try to do is, is to think about that constantly and saying, how, does it, how do we look depending on who that potential, I I'll say individual is, because some of them might be community edition users that aren't going to pay us for the product, but they want a great experience. It might be small business owners that, like I said, they're going to pay us, but they want to pay as, as little as they can to get the best functionality. And they look at us a certain way. So really, those that dialogue I was talking about, there's the big dialogue, and then it really happens in these kind of microcosms, right, where we think about what does the universe mean uh, when it comes to business and applications and technology for small business guys that don't want to pay a lot of money? What does it mean for big companies that really look at sugar as a, as a tool to, you know, to leverage to get competitive advantage? And, and, you know, and where the, the channels are that we're talking and communicating from an inbound and outbound perspective, they change based on who we're trying to target. So while there's about you know, really three different product lines the deployment really doesn't matter. On demand, it's the same product if it's on-premise. You get about the same amount of access. It depends on your corporate culture, your ownership, but those kind of three levels. Community edition, focused at developers and really tech-savvy people. Uh, professional edition for small businesses going up to medium-sized businesses. And then our enterprise edition, which is for the largest companies out there that really see Sugar as a major development platform, something that's going to take them to the next level in terms of their interactions with their employees, with their customers, with their partners. So it really spans all these different areas. So we, you know, we try to hone the messaging for those and, and, and target, you know, especially that's outbound. Inbound, again, it's we identify them pretty quickly. Uh, the great thing is a lot of our stuff is done online and these people qualify themselves. So we see what kind of white papers that I've written and the team has written and put out there and what kind of things they're, they're looking at online. And we score them and we say, okay, we're going to route them to the right person to help them based on what kind of um, uh, profile they fit. And it's really simple that way now that everything's done online. We've shrunk in the sales cycle because we don't have huge sales teams going out there, purchasing lead lists, hoping that these big businesses want to talk to them, spending you know hours on the phone, days on planes and out there and taking people to rounds of golf and expensive dinners. We've kind of got gotten past that model. A lot of the, the qualification process 
comes through a lot of different ways. People either download the product and they know it's right for them and they test out Community Edition and they say, I'd like some better features, I want great support, they, they upgrade the professional. Some large companies learn about us through a multitude of channels and they say, well, check it out. They check out Community Edition or they do one of our uh, online free trials with our own demand and they say, this is great, this is, this is right for us. And we tend to kind of close business in about 30 days where the old software model, you look at SAP and companies like that with those big rigid products that are really robust and they're great tools, but some of those sales cycles can be up to a year long. And we just said, you know, that's not, that's not the way businesses are going to grow in, in, in this economy and in this future and in a world where the Internet has really lowered the barrier to entry. And that's from a vendor perspective and a, an IT buyer perspective. IT buyers are smarter. They're more connected to each other and to the companies. And like I said, that dialogue is happening, and people are making more informed decisions in much shorter time frames. So we've really been able to, to kind of bring someone into our our relative universe, and within 30 days, turn them into either a, kind of a dedicated member of the community if they're down on the developer side of things, or really turn them into uh, a, a customer in the, in the traditional sense within about 30 days. And that's that's an amazing cycle. I mean, it really really shrinks and and pu you know pulls all the value in and gets rid of all the uh, inefficiencies and all those artificial restrictions. You know, like I you know it's you're not going out there, I said, you're not doing all the really ridiculous things like taking people to dinner and doing all those rounds of golf, that's gone. But now you're not going through five or six sessions with a demo, you know, uh, you know, first starting with Slideware, telling, explaining the product, then doing demos that are assisted by sales engineers and everything's kind of staged and real flashy. It's really people looking at the product themselves downloading it, seeing how easy it is to use and saying, yeah, there's a couple things I might need some assistance with from deep process flows or major customizations, but for the most part, it's a web application that works. And, and that aha moment for those people happens pretty early on, and then it really becomes an idea of let's work out the terms, let's see what product is the best for you, and that happens in about a month. And it, and it really is it's an amazing thing to see coming from an analyst who saw companies that I would work with VCs, and they say, "I got this company coming up. I want you to see what they're all about." And in three years, they'd have 25 customers. You know, we're doing hundreds of transactions a week. You know, so it's it's really interesting to just see how that changes so much with the open source angle bringing that in. So much transparency, eliminating so much fat out of the process, so much unnecessary processes, um, just so much artificiality is gone. And now it's just really about: is the product great? Does the product give the users what they need? Is it right for them? And is it at a great price? And if you answer yes to all those questions, like Sugar tries to do with every customer that's right for us, it shrinks that cycle so much. And it makes my job a lot easier because the, the messaging is that clear. It's, we're an open book. Take the product. Test drive it. Do what you want to it. Be part of this, this process. Be part of this culture. We're not trying to sell you a product. We're actually trying to involve you in a dialogue that's going to make your business better and that's really what we try to do and that's where we've seen success especially in the small businesses that say i need all this stuff but i don't want to go through this year-long sales cycle i don't want to be sold to i want to make a decision based on what i need and what fits my business and we've been able to strike that balance and it's been a great success for us so far so how much of the revenue at sugar cm comes from the software as a service offering right now it's about 30 percent And, and I think that's for a lot of reasons. I think software as a service in the media and among analysts, it was, it's been the next big thing, right, for a long time. But as we've learned, and a lot of people who have been really involved in IT and software over the last few years realize that trends take a long time to really become, you know, the de facto standard. Uh, you know, client-server took about 10, 15 years to even kind of get to where it was that things like software as a service and web architectures were going to supplant that. So we're really seeing among certain companies, they're just now getting into software as a service is saying, all right, this is something that I'm going to base my revenue stream on. It, it's been proven. It works. So for us, that's one reason why we, you know, it's still about 30%, but we see it, it's going to grow a lot. Another reason is I think our initial success as a company was with companies, both large and small, that said, wow, finally here's a CRM application that I can own, that I really own. I can take it, I can put it on my servers, I can customize it to any level I want, I can integrate it easily with any of my other applications, I can do cross-departmental process automation, I can bring it in with my ERP without having to pay you know, a consultant or SAP or some other vendor 
money just to have access to that. You know, it didn't make sense in these models. So they're saying, wow, I really own this. This is, I have control. I finally have control of my CRM system. So that level of, of customization and control that the on-premise product promised at the outset before we even, you know, initially even had the on-demand, that's where our amazing amount of interest happened. And it was kind of a, a landslide of just, you know, amazing interest in it. So I think they're starting to kind of even out, right? Where where those people that say, I really want the control for the competitive advantage, being able to customize and own it and just really have it, uh, met with the people that say, I want to be up and running quickly. I want to, uh, you know, pay a low, uh, you know, annual subscription fee. And I don't really care where, the, where it lies, whose servers it's on. Uh, I'm going to make some minor customizations. I'm going to do some integrations with one or two applications. I'm not going to get crazy with it. You know, more and more companies out there, especially the small and mid-sized businesses, see that as an overwhelming advantage. It's low risk, it's low cost, and it's fast results. Let's take a closer look at the software as a service offering because I know quite some open source companies who are thinking about uh, doing the same. So how long did it take SugarCRM to set up the infrastructure for the software as a service offering? Not very long at all. Uh, if you look at our, our history, in about 2005, Sugar started offering on-demand products. And, and it's, it's evolved. We've gotten better at it. I think, you know, for us, it was really easy to get up and running because we're a web-architected product by nature. So, and with the open source angle, it really scalability, I'll call it SaaSability, you know, really making something software as a service enabled is a lot easier when you're dealing with such open architectures that, that open source, you know, allows and enables. So it wasn't really difficult for Sugar at all. Now what we've done which I think is interesting going forward is we've actually open sourced a lot of what we've learned in order to create highly scalable but also highly differentiated SaaS applications. So what we're doing, uh, we call it our cloud console. And what this does is it enables our large customers, but mainly our partners, to take our kind of secret sauce of managing uh, what we call multi-instance uh, applications on demand and then do it themselves. It's kind of like SaaS in a box. Cool. Thank you very much for some great answers. Thank you.